Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. I'm so glad that you were here today. Thank you for hanging out with me. Today we are here to do my October TBR. I am very excited about this TBR edition because instead of playing the My Bad TBR game, which is my own personal TBR game, I'm actually going to be playing Becca's Bookopoly because in October she's holding a Spookopolython. So if you're not familiar with Becca and the books and her TBR game, she used to do a monthly TBR game based on Monopoly. She no longer does it on a monthly basis anymore, but she does every now and then hold readathons based on her Monopoly Bookopoly game. And this year she has decided to revamp her board for the spooky season, hence why it is called Spookopolython. And I thought that it sounded like so much fun. I had never before been able to participate in one of these and I made the decision to go ahead and do it for October. But of course before we get into the gameplay we have to do the challenge pulls and before we can do the challenge pulls we have to recap how I did in the month of September. The very first challenge poll was to read Maybe Not by Colleen Hoover which was a novella and I did successfully read that. Next I pulled Will Trent which is basically the Will Trent series by Karen Slaughter starting with the first book Triptych. I have not yet read that book because it is currently still on hold with my library. There was an extremely long library wait for this book and I am still waiting. I highly doubt that I will get to it by the end of September considering there's only one week left in the month but I do have every intention of reading this book when it comes in so if it has to be pushed to October that is totally fine. I'm okay so I guess I'm taking a punishment with that book and moving it into next month's TBR. Challenge pool number three was random number generator and so that basically means I had to go to my to read shelf on Goodreads and use a random number generator to select the book that I was going to read. It selected Hadley and Grace by Suzanne Redfern which I did read and then the final challenge pool was to read the next book in the Eddie Flynn series by Steve Cavanaugh. Now I mentioned in that TBR video after I had gotten done filming that none of the later books in that series, so books like 5, 6, and 7, currently have an audiobook attached to them. I'm not really sure what's going on with the availability of Steve Cavanaugh's books, but it's kind of all over the place. And so like even though he has seven books out in the series, only the first three or so have audiobooks, and audiobook for the fifth book is not even expected to be out for another couple of years. I don't understand how that works or why, but these are not books that I'm just going to sit down and read physically. So I had to go ahead and do another challenge pull, at which point I I pulled the next book in the Desert Plain series by Victor Methos that actually worked out quite perfectly because both Victor Methos and Steve Cavanaugh's books are legal thrillers. So I basically just replaced one legal thriller with another. I did end up reading that Victor Methos book and I really enjoyed it. So that was another one satisfied. Now in terms of the gameplay prompts, the first prompt I landed on was to do a random letter generator. That random letter generator gave me the letter T and so for that I decided to go ahead and double up and read Triptych which is the first book in that Will Trent series. Again I have not read it. It's still on hold at the library and I will be getting to it as soon as I possibly possibly can. The next prompt landed me on viewer recommendations so I had to go back to that video where I asked you all to go through my physical TBR or my want to read shelf on Goodreads and make some selections on what you would really like to see me read. I used a random comment picker and the pick chosen was Undercover Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the second book in her Bromance Book Club series. I did read that as well. Next I landed on the prompt to read Red on the cover. For that I selected The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum. I did read that. Next I landed on the prompt to read a book with fall vibes and at the time I made the TBR video I did not have a selection for that but I ultimately ended up choosing to read The Only One Left by Riley Sager because it came in from my library and it fit the prompt perfectly so of course I did read that. Next was to read a book box selection and for that I picked The Family Game by Katherine Stedman and I did read that. And the final prompt I landed on was to read a book by one of my favorite authors and since Maybe Not is actually a novella that follows Maybe Someday by Colleen Hoover I went ahead and decided to read Maybe Someday so that I wasn't missing anything when reading Maybe Not and since Colleen Hoover is one of my favorite authors it worked out perfectly so I did satisfy this one. All right so we definitely have a very successful reading month in September, not just in terms of quantity, but quality as well. And lately I've been finishing my TBR earlier and earlier and earlier. And so for the month of October, I have made the decision that if I finish my TBR or if I'm in between books and there's something that's not available that I need to read quite yet, I will go ahead and do another roll for Spookopoly to choose my next read. So throughout the month, I'm going to be doing more and more rolls. I will start this gameplay with the six standard rolls and then read more as I need to. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the standard three challenge pulls. And then of course, I do still have to read Triptych, which could technically be considered the fourth challenge pull for this TBR since I technically did not read it in September. September. But as usual, we are going to go ahead and start with the challenge pulls. So let's see. These are all, I always make these so, so small that I can't grab them and I can't open them. All right. Okay. Got one. All right. Let's see. Random number generator again. So again, I have to go to my Goodreads want to read shelf and I will use a random number generator to select my next read. Obviously, I do not have a selection for that at this time, but as soon as I know, I will be sure to post it up on the screen for you. All right. Challenge pull number two. 
a banned book. Okay, so this is a challenge prompt that I still have to satisfy for one of the many reading challenges that I'm doing for the year. I have successfully completed 90% or more in all of the challenges and I only have a handful of things left. I'm going to be honest and say that there are hardly any banned books that I'm actively interested in reading. A lot of the banned books that I was interested in reading I have already read, you know, like Harry Potter and things like that. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to select for this one. I'm going to have to do some more research to see if I can find one that I really truly am interested in. The only one that even remotely stands out to me at this point is The Handmaid's Tale, but I still don't even know if I'm interested in that to be honest with you. So this is another one that I'm not going to select an option for in this video and I'm going to be honest and I'm not even going to prioritize this prompt. If I don't satisfy this challenge prompt it's not that big of a deal. It's not one that I'm excited about at all but I did want to go ahead and give myself an opportunity to read a book for this so we'll see. If there are any banned books that you have read that you really think that I should check out please feel free to leave those in the comments down below and I will be sure to take your suggestions to heart but just based on the research that I've done so far for this there are really none currently that I'm interested in reading so I have no idea what I'm going to read for this. I may ultimately go ahead and do an additional challenge pull because I do not know if I'm even going to read that. That is not going to be a priority book for me in the month of October. All right, number three. True North by Serena Bowen. So that is her True North series. I believe I'm on book five or six of that series. It's just a lovely romance series of interconnected companion novels that I really enjoyed so far. Not necessarily the vibe that I'm going for in October, but we're going to work with it. And let's go ahead and do one more for good measure since I do not know how that banned book prompt is going to work out. All right. Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kimmerer. So this is actually a fantasy that I would want to read with my eyeballs and I already currently have something planned for October that I do plan to read with my eyeballs. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back just because I'm not quite ready to read it right now. And I'm also currently reading Inkblood Sister Scribe. So I'm currently in the middle of one and I already have one planned. So I'm going to allow myself to put that one back. Let's see. Gold Rush Ranch by Elsie Silver. So this would be another new series that I'm starting. I've only read one Elsie Silver. It's the Flawless book, which is the first book in her Chestnut Spring series. I enjoyed that one so much that I went ahead and added this to my TBR as well. Again, not the vibe that I'm going for for October, but I got it. So we're going to read the first book in this series. All right, y'all. So the challenge prompts were not exactly kind to me, not necessarily because I don't want to read the True North or the Gold Rush Ranch. It's just, I was really hoping to prioritize a lot of thrillers and suspense in October, but I do typically need breaks in between those. So these might be good kind of palette cleansers in between them. And then of course we have the banned book option, which I'm not excited about at all. So we're going to see how that one works out. So with those four plus triptych, I have five challenge polls that I'm going to try to satisfy in the month of October and we'll see how it goes. For now, y'all, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay for Spookopoly. Hello everyone. All right. So here I do have Becca's Spookopolathon board. I have my little pawn here from my own TBR game. Now his butt is a little bit too big to fit in these squares, but we're just going to have to work with it because that's kind of all I got at the moment. As you can probably tell, I'm in a different location than I typically film these videos. That's because this board is significantly smaller and I wanted to make sure you guys would probably be able to see some of the prompts at least as much as possible. My printer is doing something funky so there are some skips in color and I apologize about that but overall I think it looks pretty good and you should be able to see. Now I am out here in a common area. I am out in the living room and so that also means that my animals are going to be out here and you're going to be able to probably hear all kinds of background noise. I apologize about that. Hopefully the animals will not interrupt us too terribly much. There are die for this game, not cards. So I'm going to do six different rolls. If I get a double, I do have to roll again. So that could be added to my TBR, but we're going to start with six. Now, something I am doing differently this month is that if I do manage to finish my TBR in the month of October, I'm going to continue to roll each time I need a new book. And there is Nola, so we are off to a great start. She is probably going to want to be involved every step of this. So I'm going to start with six and I'm going to add six books to my TBR. But if I finish my TBR early, like I have been doing every single month, I'm going to go ahead and roll each time that I need a new book and I'm probably going to try to vlog the experience. I haven't decided yet but even if I don't vlog I will keep track of the rolls and what I land on. So without further ado let's go ahead and do our first roll. So we have a two and a four that is six so let's see one two three four five six orange and that is exactly as it sounds it is to read a book with a mostly orange cover all right so my very first roll was a number six it landed me on the prompt to read a book with mostly orange on the cover and i'm so excited because for this i've chosen to read all the sinners bleed by s.a cosby y'all know how much i loved razor blade tears by s.a cosby and that book definitely put s.a cosby on my radar i'm super nervous going into this just because i'm worried 
that his backlist stories or this newest release is not going to live up to razor blade tears which was just so dark gritty and gruesome and vengeful and i absolutely loved it i ate it up it was an easy five stars for me and one of the best books that i read last year and so i've been anxiously awaiting the opportunity to read another one of his stories but like i said i'm going into this one a little bit cautiously with lower expectations just because i don't know if anything could live up to razor blade tears but let me go ahead and tell you what this one is about titus crown is the first black sheriff in the history of charon county virginia in recent decades charon has had only two murders after years of working as an fbi agent titus knows better than anyone that while his hometown might seem like a land of moonshine cornbread and honeysuckle secrets always fester under the surface then a year ago to the day after titus's election a school teacher is killed by a former student and the student is fatally shot by titus's deputies those festering secrets are now out in the open and ready to tear the town apart as titus investigates the shootings he unearths terrible crimes and a serial killer who has been hiding in plain sight haunting the dirt lanes and wooden clearings of charon while the killer's possible connections to a local church and the town's harrowing history weigh on him titus projects confidence about closing the case while concealing a painful secret from his own past at the same time he also has to contend with a far-right group that wants to hold a parade in celebration of the town's confederate history powerful and unforgettable all the sinners bleed confirms s.a cosby as one of the most muscular distinctive grab you by both ears voice in american crime fiction so as usual i think that this is going to be a very harrowing novel definitely gritty and dark and it's going to certainly cover topics of racism and i'm just anxiously awaiting this story y'all i am super excited to go ahead and read another s.a cosby and quite honestly this is one of the only other books on my tbr that is primarily orange and kind of fits the vibe of what i was looking for for october so it was an easy choice so i'm hyped for this one in october and now archie is in the blinds to my right and so he will likely be making a lot of noise gotta love cat interference in the game all right now on to rule number two five and two which is seven one two three four five six seven spooky and according to the rules that becca printed out spooky is anything that i would consider spooky this can be a horror a vampire book or even something with an eerie cover this prompt is solely open to my own interpretation nola she's trying to steal the pawn do you see this nola me <laughs> nola me oh my gosh y'all she does this with my own TBR game too. Oh my goodness. I better try to get through this as quickly as possible. All right. My next roll was the number seven. It landed me on the prompt to read a spooky book. And I don't necessarily have anything in particular in mind for this. I definitely have a lot of spooky horror slash thriller books on my TBR that I could choose from. But I think I'm going to allow myself to hold out for some library loans that I currently do have on hold. That would definitely fit this prompt. Primarily Gone Tonight by Sarah Buchanan. I actually anticipate this coming in very, very soon. From what I understand, this is a story about a complex mother-daughter dynamic where both the mother and daughter are hiding secrets. I'm not really sure where this is going to go but I'm going to try to trust Sarah Buchanan because I really have loved a lot of the books that she has written with Greer Hendricks and I kind of want to see what she can do on her own. So like I said I do anticipate this one coming in from the library very shortly and so this would be a top contender for me to read for the spooky book. Another one that I have on hold that I would love to get to in October if it does come in from the library is Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. I really really adored Wrong Place Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Callister, and I certainly want to read more from her so I was super excited to get this from book of the month from what I understand this follows a detective and there's a missing girl out there and the detective is supposed to be discovering what happened to this missing girl but this detective is being blackmailed and the only way that she can keep her secrets from being revealed is by not finding the missing girl and so I'm really interested how she's going to toe the line of doing her job while also trying to keep her secrets hidden I'm super intrigued by this one again it's on hold at my library I will be reading it as soon as it comes in so it would just work really well if it could fit that spooky prompt all right, roll number three. We have a six and a three, so that is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That Archibald. No, down. And that is chance. I'll go ahead and switch the board so you can see this side now that we are on it. But yes, that is the chance square. And the orange are the chance cards. Now the chance cards feature names of books that I want or need to read. There's a mixture of books in here. There are books that I need to read for challenges that I'm trying to do for 2023. There are also books that I'm not necessarily super excited about or books that I am super excited about. So I have no idea what I'm going to go ahead and get. Those were very much shuffled before I put them on the board. And these are teeny tiny, so let me see see what we get 
From Below by Darcy Coates. She is a big horror writer and I believe this one takes place entirely like in the ocean and under the water. So this one works for me. All right, then I rolled the number nine. It landed me on the chance option. And so I pulled the chance card and that gave me From Below by Darcy Coates. I read The Haunting of Ashburn House. I think it was a few weeks ago. It was my very first experience with Darcy Coates. It didn't blow me out of the water, but I really enjoyed ultimately what Darcy Coates did with the story. And I'm certainly interested in reading more from her, especially this one, because it deals with the ocean, like the deep underwater ocean. And as much as I love the ocean, the thought of what lies below the ocean is absolutely terrifying. And I'm not talking about sea creatures, y'all because I just know that there are like a plethora of dead bodies down there just waiting to be found. And I am constantly terrified about what would happen if I learned to scuba dive and I went down there and I discovered a shipwreck or a dead body or something going on. And so that terrifies me. And I like the idea that this book is kind of going to explore that concept. This says, years ago, the SS Arcadia vanished without a trace during a routine voyage. Though a strange garbled emergency message was broadcast, neither the ship nor any of its crew could be found. 60 years later, its wreck has finally been discovered more than 300 miles off of its intended course, a silent graveyard deep beneath the ocean surface, eagerly waiting for the first sign of life. Oh my gosh, so terrifying. Cove and her dive team have been granted permission to explore the Arcadia's rusting hull. Their purpose is straightforward, examine the wreck, film everything, and if possible, uncover how and why the supposedly unsinkable ship vanished. But the Arcadia has not yet had its fill of death, and something dark and hungry watches from below. With limited oxygen and the ship slowly closing in around them, Cove and her team will have to fight their way free of the unspeakable horror now desperate to claim them. Because once they're trapped beneath the ocean's waves, there's no going back. Y'all, that sounds absolutely terrifying. I'm very excited to see what Darcy Coates is going to do with this story. So this is one I'm certainly hyped to get into for October. All right, roll number four. So that is a two and a four. So that again is a number six. And these chance cards are all over the place. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. Poll pick. Okay, so I believe a poll pick is where I have to go ahead and make a list of books that I want to read and then have a group of people choose from that list of books. So I'm going to go ahead and gather a list of books that I want to read in the month of October and have people pick for me. All right, next I rolled another number six and that landed me on the prompt to do a poll pick. So basically I had to select a handful of books and I had to put up a poll on some kind of social media and let people choose for me. I actually used a Patreon discord that I'm a part of to get people's feedback. I included, I would think, five or six options. And at the time that I'm filming this, the winner was Finley Donovan Knocks Them Dead by El Cosmano. So this is the second book in the Finley Donovan series. If you're not familiar, this is kind of what I would consider almost a cozy mystery slash comedy of errors, but there's definitely a more serious side to them as well. This follows our main character, Finley Donovan, and she is a writer. If I remember correctly, she is a writer of like romantic suspense. And in the first book, she's having a lot of things go wrong. She's recently divorced. Her husband cheated on her. He's moved out. She's a single mother. She's having to juggle all of this. And on top of that, you know, her next book is due. She's supposed to be writing and she's meeting in a Panera Bread with her agent and she's discussing the plot of her next book and somebody is sitting next to her and they mistake Finley for a hitman. But basically this woman approaches Finley and says my husband is a bad man and he needs to die and I need your help and then it kind of goes from there. Naturally of course Finley is like what the heck are you talking about? I'm not a murderer. I'm not going to do this but Finley is in desperate need of some money and so she kind of goes and she scopes out the situation but I don't think she really has any intention of killing him but then he accidentally winds up dead anyway and she gets herself into a whole mess of shenanigans and I'm really excited to see how this continues that I believe in this book her ex-husband is the target of somebody and so it's probably going to be about her trying to save his life and I'm down for it. I have no doubt that this is probably going to be just as fun and entertaining as the first book and so I'm very glad that this won the poll. All right roll number five. Okay we got a one and a three so that is four. One, two, three, four. Hannibal Lecter. So according to Becca's rules, it says, avoid becoming Hannibal's next snack. Read a book with a body part in the title, e.g. blood, heart, mind, soul, face, etc. All right, then I rolled a four and that landed me on the prompt of Hannibal Lecter. And that was basically to read a book with a body part in the title. And I kind of actually chose a very easy one for me, one that I know that I can fly through in a day. And that is Finger Lickin' 15 by Janet Ivanovich. This is the 15th book in the Stephanie Plum Bounty Hunter series. I've actually been making quite a good bit of progress in that series this year because I consistently pull Pull these books from my challenge cup. So I've recently read 12, 13, and 14 in this series. And so I'm primed to read book number 15. This has finger in the title. It's going to work well. This is one that I can finish in a day's time because they're very, very short audiobooks. So this is the perfect opportunity for me to go ahead and make even more progress in this series. And to be honest, I didn't have very many books on my TBR to begin with that had body parts in the title. So this one just worked out really well and I'm going to go ahead and use it. All right. And this should be the very final roll unless I get a double. Three and four, which is seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven highest rated. All right. So that means I have to go onto my Goodreads and read one of my highest rated books. All right, everyone. And that is it for this round. But like I said, I will be rolling throughout the month. Like if I ever run out of books for my TBR, like if I'm done with it and I need more to read, or if I'm stuck between a book, like let's say I finished a book and I need to read another one, but maybe it's not available for my library and I'm waiting on it. I can go ahead and roll again for my next read. All right. And then my very final roll was a seven and it landed me on the prompt to read the highest rated book on my TBR. Now I already knew that the highest rated books on my TBR were going to be incredibly dense, chunky fantasies. And that was just something that I knew I was not going to read in October. And like I said, I do already have plans to read something in October that I need to read with my eyeballs. It's something that I plan on picking up immediately after finishing Ink Blood Sister Scribe. So I'm not going to have the availability to read one of these fantasies. And that's not even something that I would be able to finish in the month of October between school, work, booktube, all of that stuff. So I gave myself a little bit of grace. And instead, I did go to Goodreads. I sorted by highest rated. And I went to the very first book I knew I was going to be able to read. And oddly enough, it's actually the third book in the Desert Plain series by Victor Methos. It had a 4.52 rating, which is definitely high, but this only has about 7,000, 8,000 ratings. So it's on the lower end of the spectrum in terms of the number of ratings that it has. Whereas, you know, like the Brandon Sanderson's and the Sarah J. Masses that were up there had hundreds of thousands. So this is not necessarily fully representative of the quality of the book, but I'm going to go ahead and go with it. Now, this is the third book in the Desert Plain series, but for the most part, it's going to read like a standalone because it doesn't follow the same character as the first two books. The first two books cover federal prosecutor Jessica Yardley and as she is solving crimes and prosecuting cases as well as her serial killer ex-husband who is currently in prison but I believe that this follows two defense attorneys that you meet in book two so you don't necessarily need to have read books one and two in order to read book three. I don't know if this is the final book in this series or if it is going to continue but I do believe that this is the final book that has been released up to date and so if I finished this book in October I will be fully caught up with this series. I think Victor Methos is incredibly talented at writing legal thrillers and so this is certainly fitting the vibe that I'm going for in October and I'm more than happy to go ahead and read it. All right, everybody. So those are all the books that I'm going to be reading for my challenge polls and my gameplay so far. I do also have to read a book club selection for the month of October. It is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. This is the October selection for the Bookworm Bitches Book Club. It is a book club that I help moderate over on Goodreads. So that is another one that I hope to get to in October. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all the books that I plan to read in the month of October. Between all of the challenge polls, the gameplay, the book club selections and all that, I actually have about 12 books that I definitely plan to read in October. And that's a pretty healthy amount. I don't actually know if I'm going to have room to read anything additional in the month of October or do additional Spookopoly gameplay. So we're going to see how it goes. Please comment down below and let me know what you think of my TBR. If you have read any of the books that I plan to read and what your thoughts are, I would love to know. If you have made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, please go ahead and leave, of course, a spooky emoji, a ghost, a spider, a cobweb, whatever you are feeling. And please also let me know if you are participating in Spookopoly as well. But anyway, y'all, as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to connect with you in one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms. I always leave links to my Goodreads, Instagram, and IG threads down below. And I would love to chat with you there. You know, I love connecting with you, but until next time guys, bye.